Hello and welcome to Lab Matters, a webcast from Kaspersky Lab. I'm here with Tillman Werner from our German office. Tillman is a virus analyst who specializes uh, in malware uh, related to botnets. And I invited you here today to talk a little bit about botnet mitigation, some of the work that the good guys have done to do uh, around takedowns, around uh, you know helping to mitigate some of the threats from botnets. And I want to start obviously with one of the bigger botnets that has been in the news over the course of the last year or so, uh, which is Configure. I just saw a final report that says there are still millions of inf infected machines out there. But in a general sense, the threat has been somewhat mitigated. Explain how the threat has been mitigated, yet th those machines are still, m millions of machines are still infected. How does that balance? Okay, so right now we still have around five million infected machines and the mitigation is more or less uh, aiming at blocking the command and control channel. So uh, we are trying to prevent the, the bot herder, the, the right. operator of the botnet, uh, from commanding Right, from controlling those machines. infected yes. machines. So we've successfully done that? That's more or less successful, yes. Uh, it's based on uh, some sync holding, so we basically try to null route all infected machines to, to uh, one of our machines. So. Uh, no, no other person can jump in and act as a command and control server or command the machines. Right, so the, the guy who, uh, or, or the group who originally created the botnet now do not have access to send uh, controls to those infected machines. Correct. Uh, is there ever a chance we'll get those machines disinfected or are we just resigned to the fact that those machines will forever be infected? Well, um, if you take into account that these machines are infected for more than two years now, then I think Configure will, st will still be around in a couple of years. So, um, I mean, of course, um, the numbers will uh, um, lower, mm -hmm. but I mean, machines get reinstalled, uh, people switch to new uh, right. operating systems, stuff like that. But I think it will take some years until we totally got rid of Configure. Would you say the threat has been nullified? It's or is there, is, there, is there a risk, is there a worry that, you know, something can be reinvigorated around Configure? Well, um, there is a possibility to gain control over the botnet again. Uh, I don't want, really want to talk right. about that in public because it's, you know, a bit delicate. Right. But um, uh, I think the bot herder can um, regain control at any time. We also, there's a, there's a bit of an ethical, uh, uh, legal, somewhat nightmare among the security research community because there are technical measures that can be taken to completely disinfect machines. Can you talk a little bit about uh, some of the, you know, how researchers and the, and the security research community has been hamstrung by legal issues and, uh, you know, where you can, you can, there's a technical measure that can be taken, but because of, uh, you know, laws in different countries and around the world, you really can't go that extra step to do uh, maybe do a complete disinfection or, or, or remove a botnet uh, off the internet. Talk a little bit about some of those issues you guys face as you do this research. Well, um, botnets like Configure, one of the uh, characteristics of these botnets is that they are kind of decentralized. So there is no real central entity that can be approached or mm -hmm. attacked or whatever. Um, so uh, uh, another approach or the option that's left is to to approach the infected machines themselves right. um, for example what you can try to do is you can try to remotely disinfect remotely clean those machines but of course you cannot go to five million people and ask for permission to do so so you would have to do it without permission and right. this is where law doesn't allow us to do it right now right you really can't uh, touch someone's machine without their consent, without their exactly. agreement. But there has been uh, there have been efforts in the past, most recently with the uh, police uh, law enforcement officials in the Netherlands around disinfect disinfecting a, a particular botnet. Talk a little bit about what uh, they did without going the extra step of actually disinfecting the machine, actually using executable to perhaps you know send users to uh, information places that they can find disinfection type information, so that they do that extra step. Uh, we've seen that uh, in the past. Talk a little bit about that. And do you think that that's where eventually we'll have to go just to deal with this botnet epidemic? First of all, um, I think what the Dutch police did is a very good thing. So that's the way to go. That's what we need to do in the future as well for other botnets as well. Um, but it's, it's a much simpler scenario than the configure scenario. Right. What they had was a centralized botnet. So they had their central entity where they could uh, 
well, basically issue their own commands. So mm -hmm. what they did was they pushed commands, removal commands to all infected machines. So there, so there was no need to access all the different infected machines one by one. Right. Uh, do you think, you know, going forward with some of these centralized botnets that that's all because we, we've, we've also had some success around Microsoft and Bredo Lab and some other botnets uh, where they went to some uh, legal efforts, you know, uh, taking legal control over some of the uh, uh, physical yeah. uh, things. Do you think that's what we'll start seeing a lot more of? I mean, why have there been, the bigger question is, how, why have there been so many, so few success stories when we have a big botnet epidemic? I think it's twofold. So, first of all, people are concerned to um, come near those mm -hmm. legal boundaries or uh, into this gray zone, so to speak. Right. That's one thing. And uh, we need more people like the Dutch police who, who are, you know, uh, proactive and proactive, just, yeah, uh, just try to do no, new things and to be a little more creative around uh, yes, being that's, aggressive. That's exactly, that's one thing. Uh, and that's actually possible in a lot of cases. Uh, it's not, uh, it wasn't done in the past so often, but it's, it's possible and should be done more often in the future. The other thing is that um, the complexity, the technical complexity of the botnet is a, mm -hmm. is a, uh, a very important point. So you can uh, imagine if the botnet is very complex, you need a lot of, you need to, to have a lot of analyst, uh, analysis work mm -hmm. in order to understand it and in order to find ways how to approach the particular thing. Um, so the, the examples we have seen in the past where police or uh, researchers have been successful were the more simpler ones. Right, right, right. Some of the more complicated ones becomes yeah. a lot more involved trying to, to do mitigation there. Do you think we'll ever get to a stage where the law is a lot more black and white or are we resigned to the fact that we're going to live in this gray area world uh, just because of how laws are different around the world? Uh, you know, in a perfect world, how do we fix this? Do we have one body that, you know, perhaps takes the lead in looking around some of the legal issues, creating loopholes. How, what's the perfect world scenario? Unfortunately, I, I don't have the, <laughs> the ultimate answer, but I think um, it's necessary to advise, you know, our policy makers. Um, it's our, uh, our mm -hmm. obligation as researchers or as technical people to, to tell them what we need. And uh, we need to advise them in the process to cre come up with new laws that, right. better, uh, that help us. Uh, Mitigate right. the and the hope is a lot more people are uh, as aggressive and as creative as, as the Dutch law enforcement folks that, that, you know, maybe we start to push the envelope a little more. Exactly. Thank you very much, Tillman. And thank you for watching another edition of Lab Matters, a webcast from Kaspersky Lab. Mm -hmm.